Richie Norton, um, the strength temple, as he is also known. Um, questions for him in the comments. Um, and we look forward to getting him into this live. Hey. Yo, man. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm easing into my day. I'm Good. sore. I think uh, when you went, I seen on your Instagram. I don't know if it, the, if the video was was it this morning? Were you out in the sea this morning? Yeah, I thought that would be the best way to kind of like get myself back in the zone. But now my body's like kind of like got cold. Yeah. But also like there's aches and pain. I don't normally run, so yesterday I also did a half marathon. Yeah. I've never run a half marathon before, so I'm, I've discovered aches in in parts of my body that I didn't know actually yeah. existed. Yeah. So um, I've already done a, a class this morning to try and like unravel the tension and just try and get to these spots. Yeah. So I've, I've had all my tools out, I don't know if you can see, but I'm like, all this that, stuff, yeah. actually just trying to rehab my body. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of maintenance work. Well, mate, um, firstly, um, everyone, well, welcome to the, the podcast live. Uh, thanks for having us. If people have got questions for Richie, start putting those um, into the comments. I'm going to try and do my best as uh, as the time goes on to keep an eye on what some of those questions are. The idea with the podcast live is that people loved um, the, the, the podcast that they did with you, but obviously that's just an audio experience. They get to hear our conversation, but they don't get to see, they don't get to interact um, with us. So the chance for people listening to ask your, um, ask your questions, put them in the comments, and as we go through, we'll unravel some of those um, with uh, with Richie, his um, there's a practical element because of what you're doing. I thought the opportunity to bring that to life and actually do a little bit of uh, we talked before going a bit of uh, sort of restorative uh, work, which is that we all need. It's all good for us. Um, and I can say, you know, personally, um, massive thank you from us for for, for joining us today. Um, we connected through a mutual friend, actually Harvey Gibson originally, uh, yeah. through visuals and. Um, I've been to one of Richie's uh, workshops when he happened to be in Nottingham. Um, it was the end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah. And I, one of the things that uh, I've connected with uh, Patrick McKeon, and he's going to be on, he's on at two o'clock today. Yes. After you, um, I was asking you, you, you did some breathwork stuff with us at the, uh, at the workshop, and I was just starting to delve into getting interested in that. And there's so much different stuff out there. I was on my own sort of journey of going, no one's ever taught me how to breathe. I'm wondering whether I'm breathing right or not. Like, that's where my mind was sort of going. And you said, read the Oxygen Advantage book. It's a game changer. <laughs> and I've literally, like, I have to say such a thank you to, I've literally been saying the same thing to people constantly. And we can talk, we're going to talk to Patrick later about that. So we don't need to necessarily go into that. I want to get into your stuff today. But yeah. I have just one thing on that. I have found very different uh, responses to people. So you said that to me, and I was already wanting to find out about it. So I was like, I went straight on Amazon and I bought it. Mm. And then I'm excited about this, because, and then I'm, I'm, I'm telling people about it, and some people are just like, boom. Yeah. No, I can't yeah. breathe from my nose. I'm never well, going <laughs> to. It's just yeah. an interesting mindset. Um, well, they don't, because they don't try to breathe for their nose, they don't want to, or just because they just don't feel capable of breathing for their nose. <laughs> I think... It's come from a place of, I want to tell you about this thing I found out about. And they're mm -hmm. like, I ain't ready for this. I haven't even asked you, Jacko, about this type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I ju and I just, I just find it, yeah, I find it fascinating that, that just the, what we get challenged by every day. Mm -hmm. And then even just something with our, our, almost like mentally when we're ready for a challenge or not. And this thing is just something very simple that goes on in the background all the time, automatically mm -hmm. breathing, being challenged on like, are you doing it right? Is a bit of a like, depending on where your headspace is at in, in yeah. it can be yeah. more challenging than you'd, you'd, you'd think it might be. Yeah, I think what, what comes up with me when you say that, I, I come across various different uh, people at different stages in their life or different, different personalities, different interests, different interests, um, different issues. You know, we all have these issues where we look at it physically, mentally, we're always working on, well, hopefully we're working on them. Yeah. It's more like there's an ignorance to like issues and sensitivity around aches and pains and obviously some irritations or 
uh, you know, our subconscious trying to warn us or remind us of the delicacy of how our body needs to function and align and move and breathe and all these things need to work in like this beautiful synergy. But most of us are usually way out of whack, whether that's a lot of stress, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally. And I found breath practice was the, the key part of my own personal journey before even the yoga side of things, because I'd never been taught how to breathe when I was playing rugby at the higher levels. And for me, it was the biggest transformation for me to start to rehabilitate, and rebuild my physical strength yeah. and my mental resilience. And when I tell that story, a lot of people switch off because they can't relate because they haven't been an athlete or a sports person. They've had to work at that capacity. They're just plodding through life. And that's where I've usually come up against people's interest going like, well, I'm, I'm breathing anyway. I breathe. Yeah. And what I find is, a, is, is a, a little bit of a wake up is, well, you're breathing, but I break down the, the mechanics and the biochemistry in the simplest yes. possible form you can. And then people realize actually they're way under the optimal function and that you're likely leaving yourself open to disease and like cardiovascular issues, you know, heart health, you know, just, you know, how our body gets oxygen and all these different things yeah. and try and make it as, as simple as possible. But I think what I wanted to bring up there was whenever you do mobility, whenever you're doing stretching, whenever you're lifting weights, whatever you're doing physically with your body, whether that's just, you know, whatever you do day to day, if you aren't breathing in sync with what you're trying to physically push your body to do, you're leaving things on the table. You know, you're missing an opportunity to really maximize your output. And then you ask the question, like, well, what are you trying to do in the first place? Like, what's your intention? Why are you training? What are you training for? You know, and most people have the intention to do it well, or at least achieve something, even if that's just day to day and going through life physically, mentally healthy for longevity, to not get sick, to not get ill, to not get injuries. You at least hope most people have that intention, right? Yeah. And it, I pull it all the way back to, well, if your breathing's not on point and you're, you're not breathing efficiently, you might as well not bother pushing as hard as you want to physically yeah. to be able to get to where you want to go. You have to have your breathing on point. And that usually yeah. gets people at least thinking. Otherwise, they're in self-destruction mode and they're not, they haven't got a good enough reason yet to even want to care. And that's a different process in its place. But I think that's something else also to work on, isn't it? You know, no matter yeah. what we're hoping to achieve while we're here, you need to really think about embracing day-to-day -day more mindful practices yeah. to be able to keep control of these different variations of stress to create the adaptations that we hope to have for our progression to yeah. improve whatever that is. And everybody yeah. is open to this. So, yeah. Well, stress was something I just, I just wrote down a, a, a note, like stress, and you mentioned it there, like it was making me think of, stress management going um when you when you're when you're describing like how if you're not breathing correctly that's going on in the background constantly and then you're going to try and push yourself and do something else in another area if you've got this dysfunction going on in the background it's a it's a stressor on the body and the depending on where people are at in there when they hear the term stress they might only have one image of what that is mm. in being like that that stress state because you've got too much on and feeling overwhelmed rather than like thinking about stresses any stressors on the body that can be inputted in physically emotionally all, all sorts of things and yeah if you're there's only so much there's only so much i don't have you come across z health no they uh, I like z or sea uh, z is z health oh z health no i haven't no um and they talk about stress bucket and there's only like so much that you can take and then the body will there'll be the output will then be once it's overflowing it might come out in a pain or it might come out it could come out in lots of different ways and not necessarily just and not all those different stresses um can play a part uh, we'll we'll be able to 
just trying to give people a little bit of um, uh, background or you're going to be able to, you're, you're, we've talked, started to talk about a lot of different things already, which is great. But what I loved about the, when I, um, looking at your stuff and then when I came to your workshop to experience it, we're going to give people the chance to get, um, to get practical in a minute, um, is that you bring together that mindfulness, you bring together um, the breath work, you bring together that in, in movement. And that is something that a lot of us that love like training, we love movement, like we get to connect to. If you only talk to me about, or it's just what I think that's really great about your stuff, I'm able to connect with it because you're meeting me at a level where, um, or at a point where I'm comfortable. Like I want to move better. And then you bring in these different inputs as well. And I think mm -hmm. that from a personal, but I, I resonate with your story personally. Like you talked about on the podcast when you when we did the, your actual interview yeah. um, about you know your your, your rugby background mm -hmm. um, and that you uh, and just want to give people a little bit of context that might be like listening for the first time that your rugby background um, and then you went through a period of I get de is depression the, the the right word to describe yeah. that is that. A yeah, I think if I was to highlight that with the time that I've had to sort of process the journey, let's say, because I talk about it quite a lot now in, in yeah. podcasts and in, when I when I kind of unravel when people ask my my history, it was more. So I went on this journey of like trying to figure things out when you're younger. I, I was I was able to find sport as a way to like sort of like you know let out let off some steam but also find a real passion in it and a skill to be able to like go on that journey. We all have our own version of that, right? Yeah. And then it comes to an end. So it stops It's a chapter that ends and that chapter when it ends, especially if you've set your heart on that being kind of like your whole future and how it unravels, yeah. you, you have this point of like, right, well, um, right. Well, what's next? And, and you, and you can sometimes feel this bit of a, a, a loss and, um, disconnection from the reality that you'd found as being your world, especially if it was like a bit of a crutch for yeah. you to manage stress, anxiety, anger, frustration, or just hormone changes, you know, whatever it is. Well, I think um, also, Richie, it's partly like our identity as well. Gets yeah. Up in that, I think is one of the big challenges that when we stop. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, because we create this attachment, whether that's through ego or not, to this identity and how we want yeah. to be portrayed and this image that we've created, right? So the biggest transformation for me was actually going to these darker places of going like, wow, I'm really just like stuck here and I'm lost and I'm, I don't know where to go. I don't, I don't even relate to the person that I am now. Who is this person? But it's more like it was a lack of direction. It was a lack of structure. Uh, it was a lack of self-awareness and to bring it round to the point of the whole mindful element. Yeah. Breath work and movement and mobility and stretching and yoga, all these things that I've now found as the foundation of me staying present and being more connected and being more self-aware, be more uh, authentic was the biggest wake up, even though the transition was quite hard as a rugby player going to yoga is like, mm -hmm. It's it, a big was more, it was more I realized that the more I saw the suffering and the pain and like the self-awareness and sometimes facing up to the reality of, well, I'm not really happy about that part of me. It's now become the strength and the fuel to actually maintain the momentum I have now and it empowers me. But yeah. it also gives me confidence to actually help others as a coach because I kind of like know that there are different stages to you actually figuring it out for yourself. Yeah. And just sometimes we just need that little helping hand to navigate that whole period, but don't be afraid to like give it a go no matter where you're starting from, because we all have to, if we're learning and we're curious and we're trying to improve ourselves, which you like to think everybody would do, yeah. whatever your dream is, you have to go on the journey of discovering. And sometimes that's going to be hard, but, to create adaptation, to get growth, to find change. You've got to like lean in some things that are gonna be hard work, whether that is physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, however you look at it, right? So yeah. it's like, well, yeah, I, I, was, I was pretty low. I, I could say it would be depression if you want to tie on it, but it was like this wave of like lows and then some highs and then some real lows and then some yeah. massive highs. But I had no way of harnessing it until I found a practice and these daily rituals 
that gave me this space to actually go, whoa, okay, this is where I'm at. What's the best thing for me to work, help myself navigate this time to move forward and get to the next day? Yeah. And then, oh, I over overcame it. Brilliant, right, that's a building block. So to make this, you know, to make this more relevant again to other people and allow them to relate, we all face our own versions of these challenges and yeah. these obstacles. So we can choose to hit it head on and like, you know, see the obstacle as a real opportunity to, to grow and like to like fight it in a mindful way. Or we can maybe choose to step away and take a different perspective to maybe navigate a different direction because that's the path of less resistance that will allow us to kind of like get a bit of breathing room and then choose a path that was probably not right for us in the first place, but we've evolved and we've changed and we've put the time in. And I, I find this now in my personal practice, training physically, yeah. when I'm doing meditation work, when I'm doing breath work, when I'm doing yoga, the more mindful you are with your breathing and attaching that to the physical practice, the more chance you have of really listening to what your body is capable of in that moment, not just being a robot. So this mindful connection to movement, whether you're lifting weight, whether you're a ballerina, the more in the zone that you are, yeah. the more connected you are to the, the, the muscle re recruiting all these fibers, but also you really get into a nice rhythm and that's when you have your best possible connection to your body. But also your mind is, is really like dialed in we should all be searching for this, right? No matter what yeah. level you're at. Yes. Yeah. So I tapped into that for the first time. I was like, what on earth was I doing when I was playing rugby back in the day? I was just smashing myself. And no wonder I got injured, you know? So what I teach with the yoga or the movement and the meditation or when I'm coaching people through like life changes, the practices are still the same. We just disconnect from all of our awareness and our natural intuition and our gut and our like feelings. We're all just up here way too much. So that's when we all spiral out of control and things kind of rabble out of like alignment and then get overwhelming and overstressed and then you're not managing it because people aren't taking that space. Yeah. And that's where the breath plays a huge part. Yeah. Well, it is the key. Yeah. So yeah. that was a bit of a ramble, but that no, was, no, no, no. That helps me unpack like why I'm here and what I'm doing and what everyone should hopefully go, wow, actually. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, um, there's a lot on that. I was making a couple of notes as you were talking through it. So <laughs> I was going pretty quick. Pick that. a couple of bits. Watch that on replay. <laughs> no, no, I just want to emphasize a couple of bits. Like you were talking about um, uh, like self-improvement and you, because of your mindset towards it and it's so like, positive was it and you want to improve like yourself there's like a level of um assumption that like sure everyone everyone wants to everyone's on this same journey and they are i i agree with that they are on the journey but i think everyone that lots of people are at different levels of awareness of like whether they are realizing that they should be or are trying to like self-improve i think one of the and one of the great things about um the guests that we've got, we've had on the podcast in general, and then the, the 12 amazing guests we've got today, throughout the day is like, everyone's bringing like a different bit of expertise. And so we get to, to try and self improve or learn from these different experts. And they all plug into then us improving um, ourselves, which is, yeah, it's one of the great things about bringing lots of different people um, together the same way, as I said already, like the, you bring a lot of different elements into your, if, if you call it your practice, mm -hmm. that it is breath, it is mindfulness, it is gratitude, it is uh, movement, it is those yoga elements. And like, I guess, I don't know whether, um, do you have like one word, do you have a one like, how do you describe that all in one like, do you have a, like a, it's this? I know that this, the strength temple was like the- Yeah, no, no, there isn't really, there isn't a title. I, I think it's just, um, You're a coach. <laughs> in, in, yeah, I'm a coach, but it's more like an intuitive coach. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't have like one direction of that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I like yeah. to be curious. That keeps yeah. me interested. So 
to make it even more relatable for the people that listen to this, no matter where you are, you don't have to be an athlete, you just have to be someone who's a bit more conscious of like being a human being that is capable of a lot. And the way to make the most of the time that you have here is make sure you are conscious of your health, physically, mentally, emotionally, and the tools that we all have access to, right? So yeah. you mentioned like there's different people uh, on the podcast. There's also lots of different people listening to this right live yeah, yeah. and they would have had a different upbringing so even if i learned all the same skills as everybody on here talking and teaching my story would still be different so how i delivered it and how i perceived it was going to be different right so yeah anyone watching this anyone listening to this is like right well where am i starting from what has my story been and how do i want to steer it from here so what do you want to educate yourself on? What interests you? Stay curious, explore, experiment, right? So if you're a bodybuilder or you're a calisthenics person, have you ever tried yoga? No. Okay, well, why not give it a go and explore it? Try different teachers, see what your experience is. You can absorb that information, whether you use it for yourself or not. Yeah. You then might make connections based on your past and your history and the injuries that you'll then start to unlock other powers and other abilities to be able to improve how you move and how you transition through certain movements, how you recruit more muscle, how you mentally tune in to your lifting practice more consciously to be less distracted, to get better output and achieve more in a short period of time. So I'm trying to create dialogue to, and context to everybody has the ability to improve on where they are now, no matter what their level of ability, fitness level, and stage of life, age. Yeah. If you start to be a bit more mindful, curious, and aware of, and, and intuitive to how you move, what you're dealing with, how do you build from it, no matter what your story's been, no matter what your you know, life so far until now is, whether you're confident, or whether you're a little bit nervous, Maybe don't lean into this that much, but why not just explore it, knowing that you're only going to learn more about yourself. And also your body's going to create more adaptation because you're challenging it, whether it's movement, challenges, mobility, range of motion, respiratory mechanics or how you breathe, more conscious, getting more comfortable in tricky situations. These are all life skills. It's not just about you know, being an athlete and performance, it's more about like, you're gonna be able to go through life more controlled, yeah. more, a bit more like a Jedi, you know, where I like to think, you know, you're like, one of my clients called me Yoda, and I was like, I'll take that. <laughs> you know, but it's more like, you know. Better look at Yoda. I'm just embracing the Yorkshire Yoda, the, the, the Northern Yoga, the Yoda. Um, and to help this transfer over, when you have these physical and mental skills and this more awareness, let's call it, you're able to engage with people in a way that gives you this different energy connection yeah. so you can channel how you want to communicate, your yeah. body language, but also you listen in a different way because you yeah. give people space like you're giving yourself space so you don't react yeah. so fast and say something you don't mean or you just make a better decision based on the feedback that you're getting from that engagement. So it transfers into everything. Yeah. And yes. that way we're all more mindful of how we eat because we're more in touch with our gut. We're more in touch with our energy levels. Yeah. And then this, it feeds everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so, it's so much more than a physical practice is what I'm getting at. And yeah. It's just so yeah. cool to explore it. And I really yeah. want, that's all I ever want from anybody is just to kind of like delve back into something that they might have put off or look in a slightly different direction, get curious, you know? Yeah. No, definitely like, well, it definitely acts as, I can speak from obviously myself, it, just hearing you talking about it and picking it more. Um, people that are listening now, like it is, at, 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 the, at the smallest, even the smallest amount, it's, it's encouraging to like just challenge and go like, why don't you like, why don't you like, open up the mind a little bit think a little bit further it's really I, i'm laughing at myself because i men i mentioned about that um when you were talking about the rugby thing and i said oh it's like um it's our identity and like we give ourselves these labels and you know i transitioned out of like professional rugby after my head injury and 
dealing with losing that label that we give ourselves. Like I always, um, I always found that difficult. And I think a lot of people do. Mm. Um, I used to actually not like the, if I met some, whilst I was playing professional rugby, if I met someone just socially and they asked me, they asked you what you do for a job, which is obviously like almost one of the early things that come into a conversation, isn't it? I used to, I used to hate talking about it and saying, cause I didn't want to, I wanted to be like, I'm just me, like not Jack and Rugby player. Um, but then what made me laugh was that I was then literally going to you like, oh, well, what label? I was basically saying, what label do you give yourself now? Um, so I, 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 already in the conversation, I'm challenging myself, like, why did you do that? Like, it's just like, Richie does all this stuff, like, and that's cool. Um, I think the other thing was that the uh, Brian Keane, who was on, on the, the first one, we talked a little bit about self-awareness then. And you're talking a lot about that and get, encouraging people to actually start to be a bit more in tune with yourself. Mm. And that if we're, what I'm sort of hearing is, if you're an athlete or not, but even if you were an athlete, if you're only focusing on like that outward performance, you might miss some of those internal things that are going to allow you to like outwardly perform at your best. If you're not in, in tune with your, yourself, how you're feeling, your energy level, all those things, if we're not in touch with them, then you're potentially going to miss out on outward, that outward like performance that you're striving for. Um, and then the final thing was, when you were talking about um, the depth of, of one's journey, I think that because you have had that, it allows you to have that depth as a coach. And as you said, like relate to people on lots of different levels, even whether the journey is the same or not, but just because mm -hmm. it's not been an easy road and an easy path, it gives you that context. And I think someone, someone had commented saying, you know, they, they, they were, th uh, where was it? Uh, the New Leaf Treehouse Company. There you go. He's got a shout out. <laughs> uh, but say thanks. Like the, the the context, like the context really matters and helps them. People relate to you the same way as uh, as you to be able to relate to them. Yeah, I think the key thing to also mention there, yeah, in case it was missed, because we talked about the breath work side of things. And yeah, our breathing is a, a really key feedback tool. Yes. to help us understand what state we're in because most of us are just mindlessly going through the day unaware of these these like emotional triggers kicking in yeah. and you know we can say mental health on a, on a whole is like under a lot of stress right now for a lot of people in various different forms and whether you look at that as training stress performance stress or whether you look at anxiety, depression, fear, all these things that are like in excess can do so much damage and like really wear us down and weaken our whole energy, if not managed. The, the breath work, once you get better at understanding it and feeling it and having more control over how you channel it, whether you want to ramp yourself up, but you want to like stay on the level, from an athlete point of view, if you're <sighs> over breathing, you're blowing out all the carbon dioxide, as you know, or you don't, you don't find, you know, you aren't aware of when you're over pushing, over stressing it, you're going to deplete yourself and you're going to run out of gas quicker than you, you, you should be. Yeah. Or you're having a bit of a panic, you're at work, you're stressed, you've got a lot going on, you've got, you're a bit overwhelmed with everything, but you're, you still have the same breathing response. So you're like over breathing. So upper chest breathing, a lot of stress, a lot of sympathetic nervous system. Yeah, trigger, five or right? five. You, you know, you're going to be again, pushing it too far to eventually you're going to burn out, you're going to crash and you're going to like, something's going to like give somewhere yeah. where if you start to use your breathing and, and you can monitor it a little bit more, you can pull it back. Yeah. Okay, okay. You've you've caught yourself. You, like you yeah. check in. You've caught you caught yourself before you've run out run out of gas. Yeah, and then you can pull it back, make better decisions. Again, going back into like Yoda mode, where you just kind of like, okay, right. I just need to pull myself back here, and then you go back in again, ready because you just you channeled that energy, you found that focus, and you've used it in a positive way rather than let it control you. Yeah. And this is training. This is work. This is home life. You just have this, yeah. you know, just that, yeah. you know, all this stuff. And, yeah, and yeah. I think 
that's a key tool that most people aren't using. Yeah, I mean, I just on that, we'll, we'll get into some practical stuff in a second. Um, just on that, I, after your recommendation of, and, and read the option advantage, one of the things that I noticed was that exact, exactly what you're saying. When I started to like do some specific breathing practices, and it's dead simple, easy, it's not even nothing, nothing I've taken from that has been like complicated at all. But just that awareness, like we're talking about self-awareness, the specific awareness of breath. And what I started to notice was when I was, um, like I work from home, when I'm at home and I'm getting stressed about work, I feel like I feel a tension and it's like, it's obviously upper chest breathing, but I feel a lot of stuff here. And when I previously, as you said, I was just like a robot just going on. That was, that, that feeling was there, but I wasn't aware of it. And then, because just because I was starting to think about how I'm breathing and questioning, am I being um, inquisitive, like you said, I was starting to go, am I doing it right or not? And then being able to sometimes, you know, I'm not, I'm by no means the best. And you said to me the other day when I asked you about, um, cause my, I got my bolt score up quite, mm -hmm. I, I, I've reached 30 seconds. This morning it was 21 because I haven't, as you'd said, like training anything, if you get a bit slack on it, it starts to go backwards and stress plays a role in that, etc. But I, what I started to notice was I was going, oh, now I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot of like tension and energy up here. And yeah, I am feeling stress. Right, take a second, relax, breathe your nose, try and chill. And I would just like a natural physical sensation, I would feel drop down into my stomach. Is the only way I can describe it? Like, because I'd be trying to breathe, do, do diaphragm breathing through my nose. It would literally drop down and it would be, and I, I would physically feel something change and I would feel um, better for it. So I'd encourage people to, yeah, to heighten the awareness um, and, and have, and as you said, have a little bit of a go. Um, and sort of with that said, can we, there was, uh, there was someone, um, Kirsty talking to saying, um, yeah, no, there's a, I don't know if there's a question. I haven't really been watching. It was more, yeah, no, it was more, um, it was more just getting on board and, and agreeing you with um, with the breathing. People saying, well, um, be beautifully explained as well, which is great. If people do have any specific questions um, on any of the stuff that we're talking about with Richie, do put them in um, in the comments, and we will answer those. But um, on the yeah, from can we go? I've got, I've, uh, I've set my. Um, yoga mat up on the floor to do a little bit of um can we can we go and take this sort of um practically oh what well, yeah, one thing to jump into the practical i remember when i came to your workshop um you've mentioned a, a few times as we've been talking about like pain or niggles or injuries and i remember you um uh, the sincerity of you came over to me at the end because you could see i'd had a problem with my elbow for about two and a half years um and it's something that i've just been able to manage and at times it is worse than other ever um and that was a time where there were certain positions it was it was painful and uh yeah that your your sincerity or concern in, on your face when you you know when someone like genuinely is like there's a difference between your eye and like I, I, you are, <laughs> I can see that like there's some <laughs> and I could see that you wanted to you wanted to press into that and do something about that but in the in the group context we didn't have time to but it's it's um, it's doing very well so that's uh, that's good news but um, can we um, yeah can we go into a little bit of um, bringing this show bringing this a little bit to life so um, mm -hmm. what some of that breath work and what some of that like Restore, you know, we talked about maybe some, mm -hmm. some restorative moves yeah. in your style, what that would be so people can follow along. Yeah, so what I'll do to intro this is, because, you know, as in this virtual world that we've all been playing in for the last few months, yeah. what I, just watching things from afar, when people are copying a coach or someone online or YouTube, whatever it is, wherever they're getting this guidance, right? it's impossible for the person who's teaching to know everyone's body type, yeah. to know everyone's breathing pattern, yeah. right? And also range of motion, mobility, flexibility, age, injuries, right? So, you know, it's a bit of a cowboy world and you never know who you're getting guidance from, right? Yeah. So I think when people just, before we go into like some movement, it's important to be mindful. We're using that word again. So, 
I will teach a, a Zoom class that I did and I was, I was able to watch because that's the benefit of, you know, seeing people live. Yeah. And like slow everything down. We, we, I want you to be more intuitive to what your body wants to do. Slow down. And people still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And watching and just like, that, just trying to get to the end shape. Yeah. Trying to get to that end position. Have and, you read and, the book Use of Have you read the book Use of Self? No. Uh, it, uh, it was written actually, written a hundred years ago, um, <laughs> so it's quite difficult to read. But, um, <laughs> it talks about end gaining, where like so trying to like do like as you were saying, like working so hard to do that end thing, you're missing out the actual. You're making you're messing up how you actually get there because we're too focused on trying to do the end point well. Um, yeah, and you see this in most yoga classes as well, because everybody wants to be in that end position and be perfect for Instagram pictures. <laughs> it, you're missing the connection. So I, I always like to mention people who are hypermobile that have the range yeah. and just want to get and look wicked or tangled up, you know, or like super aligned and everything else, which has its place. But most of the time they miss the benefit of strengthening the joints and improving yeah. stability of the joint but also getting the nourishment and the transitional muscles that play a part in you getting from one point to the next point. If you're looking at like improving the longevity of your joints, your ligaments, your tissues, you need to make sure you're mindfully make connecting the dots, right? So you know this, but most people will miss the power and the magic and the self control of actually learning how to get their body, not yeah. ours, theirs, yeah. from one point to the next in a nice, safe way, under control for you to be able to explore maybe some new ranges, especially if you're starting from scratch or you have an injury to protect and rebuild. I never learned that, but yeah. the biggest way, because I was written off as a human being, physically capable of anything when I had my injuries, the way I was able to rebuild is because I found a teacher that explained to me, it wasn't all about rushing or the end goal. It was more about like connecting the dots in a safe way and then using breathing to help me brace my body and stabilize my body. And then also using the, the signal to the nervous system when you breathe out softly to find more range and allow the tissue to open rather than like, <clears throat> or <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? We yeah, miss yeah, this yeah. ability to like, find this nice fluid release to be able to find new range in a safe way without really aggravating all the tissue. So yeah. the reason I say that is because I can go and do a little class here and everyone can follow along and it will feel nice. But I think if there's a takeaway for this is from now, if that wasn't on your radar, slow down a little bit. Yeah. And don't feel you have to keep up with your teacher or who you're watching, you know, take control back and then explore the ends of these ranges. So you think about when we're building muscle through body weight movement or whether we're lifting weights or whatever we're trying to do, yeah. the more mindful you make it, the more connected you are to the movement and your body's going to respond in a way that's like, he's dialed in, I'm safe here, I'm going to give him or her more room. Yeah. And then you're not going to get injured. You're going to recover a lot quicker. You're going to grow a lot quicker. And then you really get dialed into everything that you do. So you find this mindful movement meditation. Even if it becomes hit training, which I know people do and they love it, which is why yeah. you see a hit person doing yoga. It's restorative. They're like, they're still going to make it hit. You know what I mean? And then missing this like, uh, you know, important slowing down yeah. but when you start to pick up the tempo the memory in the muscle is already dialed in so they're doing it safer they're going to get lower on the squat they're going to be more explosive they're going to be open up a little bit more even at higher pace because they've done the foundational work you know this i know i'm not i'm not, I'm not preaching to you but yeah, yeah i know some people need a reminder about this when they're pushing themselves yeah. have they done the groundwork yeah. Because that's going to allow you to like step up and move ahead of everybody else and not get injured and yes. probably enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> we, but mate, we all need these. We all need these um, reminders. We all need these reminders. 
<laughs> right, let's do 10 minutes because I know we, I didn't know how, how we got to 42 minutes past. Yeah, I know. No uh, yeah. Guess, guess, um, I'm going to come. I just. Uh... I'm realizing I'm going to have to stand up now because we've got this little cut. Yeah, I know. We're only right, down, so we're keep it grounded. I'm going to. Uh... I was trying to be, you're like one of the coolest people I know, so I was trying to be cool with me, uh, with me snapback. That was what the, that was what I was trying to say. Right, hang on, hang on. Right, so the key thing to do, and then it's starting now, when you're, when you, let's say, any breath work, any meditation, any movement practice, you want to dial in. My sympathetic nervous system is quite jacked because I'm talking and I'm engaged and yeah. I've got a lot going on. So first things first, when you do more restorative movement, first of all, not everyone can sit cross-legged. So it's actually okay to prop yourself up against a couch, if that's more comfortable for you, to start to work in opening the hips. You know, it's, it's, you know you're doing it there. It's these positions, if that feels better to you, yeah. when we look at doing some breath work to tune in, also, that might not be what you want to do today. You might just want to be here and breathe. So that's a really important thing. When you're doing your own self-practice, you want to like come into it at a level where you can be still and comfortable and then just allow the breathing to be your only focus. And then yeah. physically, you know, so I know you can sit cross-legged. Another thing to do when you're in this upright position, just to, we're only going to do a few breath cycles here. Yeah. You know, again, we're trying to breathe down into these lower areas of our body, so we're trying to get into the lower lungs. And start to follow the breath in and out. So wherever you're trying this now, if you're watching this on repeat, for example, you can sink into this and go as deep as you want, depending on the time. What we're trying to do is just check in, you know, address ourselves. I'm feeling a bit of a niggle in my left shoulder now. I know I'm now going to go and release that. So I'm going to steer this practice around releasing tension in my upper body. So going up into the upper chest, but down into the ribs and down into the belly. So we're looking for this expansion as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, that's going to soften. And when it gets a little contraction around the abdominal wall. And try and empty all the way out. So when you breathe in, breathe into the belly, ribs, and then up into the chest without the shrug of the shoulders, it not causing tension, and then you reverse it on the breath out. So the chest lowers, the ribs lower, and then you empty everything, allowing the diaphragm to be the main driver. So breathe in again, belly, ribs, chest. So we feel this expansion, we're getting this stretch, finding room through the rib cage, our chest cavity, and then follow it all the way out. So we're just mentally addressing the whole process of the mechanics, but also each cycle. If you've got any cues, Richie, just, um, I always find on the inhale, mm. like I, I, I'm, I'm, as, you're, I'm do, as I'm doing that, as you're, as you're talking, I feel like I'm doing, I feel like it feels right on the, and it's coming from the diaphragm, I can, I can build it up. On the, have you got any cues on the exhale? Like when people talk about like the diaphragm, I don't necessarily, I sometimes feel like I've forced that out or is it, so I'm trying I, to relax. Yeah, so I, I think the key thing is here, if you, so the mechanics of it all, the diaphragm as you breathe in, kind of like pulls down on the lower, on the, on the, on the lungs, it finds more space for you to get expansion here. Yeah. Which is why we can usually exaggerate a bit of a belly lift. Okay, so when you breathe out, it doesn't have to be chest, ribs, belly. You just have to imagine this going. So you're kind of like squeezing it out. So if, you, if you're happy to sit on the knees, some people find that easier. It allows for you to be able to like open up through here and really breathe down into the belly. But I, without breathing, I can still do this just by activating the muscles. So what we're trying to do is prime the respiratory system to get deeper, fuller breath. And as you breathe out, the cue would be to let it sort of fall out of the body. Don't try and force it apart from the bottom. If you're really, if this is the intention to get the diaphragm working, is squeeze. So you use the diaphragm and you're using the, the muscles around here to help with that contraction 
to get all the air out. And then it's just a case of reversing that so it comes back elastically. And then, because the intention, as you know, with bulk scores and yeah. uh, CO2 tolerance tests, because that's a good cue, a good guide for health and fitness and your overall health, is allowing the, the air to release gently without feeling like panicky. <gasps> so you're trying to slow it, you're trying to smoothen the whole process in every situation, even when you're hyperventilating or you're really pushing yourself and gassing, the key is still to get fuller, deeper breaths, unless you're trying to upregulate your system, which will be then, which is like um, more intensive yoga breathing, different stimulus. But as a foundation for this practice, if you can just start to be more mindful of the whole process of an inhale, feel the lungs up, diaphragm opening, expanding, and when you breathe out, contracting and empty, and just try and follow it for around 10 cycles, you're already well ahead. Most people get mentally distracted and they switch off and then they're not connected to their breathing, which is key before you do any physical exercise. So we could do that all day. We, should, we can almost do like a separate exercise on breathing practice, but I think that's quite a good key thing to allow them to take away. So to cue that with a movement practice, you want to try and maintain in a restorative mindset that same breathing rhythm. But remember, every time you're breathing in, you're finding room in here. So you're creating stability for the spine because you create this like little air pocket. So you're protecting all the internal organs. So if you go onto all fours, best way to sort of show this, and you do that same breath in, you're going to feel the back open up as the lungs fill in. Yeah. But if you're breathing down into the belly, like we were doing, sat up, and then you hold your breath, but you contract. So you're trying to squeeze the abdominal muscles, you're going to feel this extra brace. So you're stabilizing the spine. So when you take the knees off the floor in that same position, you can kind of lock. That will give you that brace. And then breathe in and out in that same position, keep contracting. You'll feel that lift into the back. You'll feel the ribs like lock in. You'll feel the intercostal muscles all stabilize. Yeah. And then release. So I'm giving you some building blocks then. If you then use that same brace, so when you're breathing, and then you move into more, more dynamic movements, or even when you're in a lunge position, so rather than just putting all the load in my spine, like most people do, if they haven't got a good abdominal strength or pelvic force strength and able to use this bracing that the breathing allows, your spine, your back is going to get a lot more load than it needs to. So if I'm doing something like stepping forward my right foot into this lunge position, And then open, if your left hand is down and your right foot is forward, open up the right hand. Take a breath in. Feel that brace and that strength as you activate a little breath hold. Feel that strength and that control and that extra power in that stability. Take another breath in. And as you breathe out, so you be more passive, see if you can open and twist a little bit more as you breathe out, as you soften. Now open the left shoulder a little bit more, push off the floor. Let the chest open the left side, left shoulder, left pec. Take another breath in. And now see if you can go a little bit deeper as you breathe out, as you add that little bit of extra resistance and then passively let go as you breathe out. And then bring it back down. Yeah, 100%. Makes sense? So the nervous system is being signaled by that breathing, not just you yeah. forcing it mechanically, and just using strength and muscle. Yeah. Your breath is allowing you to stabilize, keeps you safe. Let's do the other side to balance out. Yeah. But also, well, you, you bring in that brain, that brain element is going, that, that fight or flight response almost, or just the fact that the brain is interested in like protection. And if it feels under threat, 
why would it let you go to into a deeper range? You need to let it think that he's happy, and then he'll let you go a little bit further. Exactly. So this is the same when you're doing, if you're looking at flexibility as your focus, mobility, or just better recruitment of the muscle fibers, you have to put that breath work in, that mental connection, otherwise the nervous system doesn't really make, create the signals clearly. So you're leaving an opportunity on the table. You're not maximizing your practice. And this is what we were saying before. If you're just like, okay, got me there, got me yeah. there. Okay, my teacher's there. Yeah. You're not really training your own body. You're just following someone else. <laughs> yeah, you're just trying to get to the end rather than like yeah. doing the process. Not making the mindful connection to get these nerves and get these signals dialed in so they maintain their consistent presence in your practice, right? So take your breath in, activate the back leg. So the hip flexor here, the, back, the thighs obviously active when the knees off the floor. Push off the floor with this right hand. So you engage through that shoulder. As you breathe in, open up this left side, keep the left leg bent. Take a breath in, start to brace the abdominal muscles, start to squeeze into the floor, the hands and the feet. So you stay there, you strengthen that position. Take a breath in and hold and just squeeze and activate everything that's got contact with the floor. And as you breathe out, next breath, see if you can deepen the twist a little bit more. And now, not just with the left arm, try and open the right shoulder and the right pec. So you're now getting this nice spinal twist. And then one more breath in, little hold, so you get this little isometric contraction. And then push into the floor and then see if you can go one bit further, you'll find an extra few millimeters, if not centimeters and inches. Oh. Good, and then inhale, bring the hand back down, step back. <laughs> I'm going like, it's, yeah, it's one of those things, Richard, where you go, because you, you, a few times you go, oh, you know these things, but like I said, these reminders, because I've just followed you there very specifically, and all of a sudden, got a ton more out of that. Mm. So, obviously, that's just two real components yeah, yeah. there, so... If, you know, as a takeaway for people, the homework I always set people, no matter what we've done, is now try and integrate that mentality, knowing that that's how our body responds to every movement that you put your body through. Okay, so whether it's resistance training, whether it's movement training, whether it's breath work training, let the breathing be your guide. Yeah but also be intuitive to how your body's feeling. Some days you feel a bit closed off, you're tight, you're just in a half marathon. I've got some work to do. So I'm not going to jam myself to the normal position I know I can get to. Yeah. I might need to give it a little bit more time and then gently pull it back. This is restorative practice. This is yeah. healthy movement. So whether you're looking at the joint, getting nice open range of motion, hips nice and open, spine nice and aligned, mobile, if you're just jamming it and forcing it to what your teacher or the person that video is showing you, yeah, and not mentally going through the process yourself, you, you're kind of wasting your time a little bit and you're putting yourself at risk to one, not benefit being the key, but also potentially damage yourself. And I think that's a really important thing to do. This for me was a game changer with yoga practice because I was that kid that was like, uh, if she's doing that, I've got to compete here. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah I've, got like, competition. I've got to get in that position. I'm like really uncomfortable. This is really painful. I'm not enjoying it at all, but I've got to do it. You know, and it's like, no, well, what are you doing it for? Are you trying to punish yourself or are you trying to progress and learn about your body and give it some love rather than just beat it up all the time? And this works in any discipline. Just sometimes you've got to switch into more of an aggressive mindset if you're competing, but the the mentality should still be the same. Yeah. Be conscious, try and level out your energy so you can be consistent and stay, like maintain that trajectory rather than crash, stay optimal, reduce the risk of injury and really enjoy learning about what your body's capable of. And I promise most people, if they stick to those rules, you're gonna be on a really lovely journey and you can steer that anywhere you want. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you've got in. You're getting a lot of uh, people say, so totally agree. Thank you so much. So true. Lots of thumbs up. Lots of thank yous. Um, thank you. 
Laz saying making me making him yawn. I think that there's there's something around like nervous system stimulation and, and yawning is the knot. Oh, I thought it might be yawning. because he was just like bored. Of <laughs> <that>. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, but this is, I think, what just with what you showed us there, it's just a great reminder for me. So I've been on one of your workshops, but we need these reminders. It's a reminder of like what that that breath work, what that connection using that for everything that we do, mm. how that can help you, as you said, right back at the start, how that can help you do everything better. Um, well, and on the yawn really thing, it's quite, it's a good thing to mention that on, on the yawn thing before we move on. Yawning is usually, it's been connected to the, um, the, the requirement for the body to need more oxygen. So you're not, in, you're not breathing efficiently. <laughs> Or you're tired because your body getting starved and it's fatigued and it needs some nourishment through the form of oxygen to the tissues. Yeah. Also, it could be the trigger because the nervous system going into more parasympathetic calming because you slowed it down and made more mindful. It's trying to get your body to go into a nice rested, supple yeah. state. So feed into that. Yeah. So it's just like you're not yawning, you're like all jacked up. How are you going to go into restorative practice? And so it's a really good bit of self-awareness. So I'd use that. It's good. Yeah. It's good, good, I, um, good thing to be aware of. I literally feel like I could go for a little power nap now. I'm thinking about that's it. Only a little, that little bit, and I'm feeling great. But um, we've literally, we're, it, I know. Instagram will cut us off with, with it out. But um, mate, thank you um, so much for, for spending that time with us. Um, everyone has been commenting about how much they enjoyed that. If you don't yet follow Richie, make sure you go over and check uh, him out and... Um, you know, puts out so much of this good stuff. There's lots of other stuff that you can go and follow from his um, around using this as part of your part of your daily life and, and improving ourselves and everything that you go and do. So, Richard. thank you so much for uh, My joining me. We'll have to. Uh, there needs to be a follow up to this for sure. But we're uh, nice we'll and run, bro. We'll run out of time on this one. Thank you so much, man. We'll, no uh, we'll See be you later. later.